Welcome to my Falcon X Heavy Recreation Lodge. And yes, I will be landing or attempting to land one of the boosters. In fact, this took me many attempts, not all of which are going to be shown in this video. But here we go, launching up. And I'm waiting for the fuel, liquid fuel to go about 1500 or 1600, just about. Then I'm separating the stage, taking control of one of the boosters. And then we're going to reverse course, boost back to land and then attempt to land one of them. Because if we can land one of them, that means, in fact, we probably could land the two of them. And as you probably have noticed, I am using MechJeb in an attempt to make this easier, at least for the launch part. Uh, for the landing, no. You can see I've got the landing guidance up. Every time I tried to do the landing, it would take too long and things would get messed up. MechJeb would get confused and wouldn't work, so. That's why I'm doing this manually, just using the SAS. So here we are, we're coming down for our first landing. As you can see, we've got a lot of Delta V, at least for landing, just enough. I think I did calculate it just right. I said I calculated it, I just done guesswork. And yeah, 141 meters per second, come on. And oh, a bit too much of a wobble there. <laughs> I think one of the problems is we've had too much gimbal there on the engines. But hey, the most expensive part survived. That was the engines. And MechJeb. <laughs> oh, I was surprised that they survived. Alright, let's give this another go. In fact, I think this was the fourth attempt, maybe fifth. Because I did originally do a first test to try to make sure all the systems work. Perhaps I'll have to give this a go properly. Use MechJeb somehow. Because uh, I don't want to use Kerbal Operating System because that means you guys would have to learn how to program to copy me. But if I work out how to do it with MechJeb safely, perhaps if I do my return trip and then use that in conjunction with MechJeb, then perhaps you can land. I think those landing legs are a bit too short for this. And anyway, I've disabled the gimbal of the engines, enabled the gimbling of the aero brakes to give us some control, because he is not wobbling as much. Oh, not all the engines are disabled. And, ah, we've destroyed some of the landing legs. <laughs> but staying upright, stay upright. Yes, I'm gonna say this is a success. And we've barely got 13 meters per second left. Perfect fuel management, if you ask me. Anyway, let's go ahead and see if we can uh, get this thing into orbit on the way to Duner. Obviously, Duner, we haven't got Mars here. And as you can see, the boosters behind us are turning around to boost back towards the landing site land. Well, we'll take them out of the camera view because let them do their business as we need to get this into orbit. And yes, I'm using MechJeb to get this into orbit. That's because <clears throat> it's not cheating. SpaceX are using computers to land all their drones. In fact, as I'm doing this commentary, they already have launched this roaster into orbit. It's, or I think they've still got the live stream of the roadster going as I'm commentating right now, which is awesome, spectacular views. Perhaps I'll post a picture just over top of here now to show you what's happening. As you can see, the camera is on the roadster itself in orbit around Earth. I think it's in highly elliptical orbit. I'm not entirely sure when they're going to be doing their Mars transfer burn. But hey, let's get back to our mission here. Uh, now we're coming in, Aplapsis is at 100 kilometers, and now we're going to coast, and I can't remember, was it? Yes, now I remember, we've got 1550 meters per second left on the stage, on the second stage. So I'm gonna wait until that gets down to 1000 meters per second, you can see in stage six on the flight engineer. And then I'm gonna stage the rocket, let that booster go in for the landing. Uh, that's just a mock-up because we have no drone ship for it to land on. So uh, we're not gonna be able to do that landing. In fact, I gave it a go and it was pitch black because I chose the wrong time of day to launch. So the center booster stage is not going to be recoverable in this. Although I do simulate the burning here. I don't think it'll work exactly like this. <laughs> but if you've, if you've watched the live stream, I think it's still up there 
on YouTube to rewatch. I suggest you go ahead and do that because it shows you the trajectories of the main boost of the first boosters turning back to land and the second stage boosting until it gets trajectory towards the drone ship. Okay, so now we're in orbit. All we have to do is our Mars transfer burn. So we'll plot the course uh, about 80 days later. <laughs> yeah, I, I never time the launches in time. And then we transfer. It takes about 1,500 meters per second or so. Building up speed. And hey presto, we're on our way to Duna. This is not exactly how SpaceX are doing it. I think they're demoing that their rockets can get uh, so much payload up into a geostationary orbit and then also they can then transfer further because I think Mars is the easiest one they can do or Venus missions but going any further than that is going to be quite difficult so I'm not sure if they can do that with this rocket anyway let's release the car now it's on its trajectory towards Duna I'm not sure if they'll do this again don't think they'll separate it this so near to Earth and when I done this, it set off the trajectory towards Duna. <laughs> Incorrect. Anyway, what do you think of my roaster? Obviously, I haven't got a Kerbal in there. But hey, I think it looks awesome. But this thing is awesome. Look at those wings on the front. They give it enough lift to make sure that it's uh, lighter. I don't know. <laughs> and then it has solar panels on the back to make sure the batteries continually to work. And yes, the most astute of you probably noticed that I got parachutes in there. I was attending it to landing on Duna, but uh, I decided against it because that's not what the mission is going to do. It's going to do a flyby of Mars. So I thought I'd keep that at least true. And then it's going to end up in a uh, orbit near uh, near Mars and Earth orbit, where the plant's going to send it out of that orbit in the future. I don't know. But anyway, I'm Orbiter. Trust me, I'm an engineer, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.